Those who seek to discredit electric vehicles as being no better for the environment tend to focus on three distinct, often debunked and very often disproven pillars on which they hang all of their arguments. The first usually revolves around the claim that electric cars are far more toxic to produce than internal combustion engine vehicles, all because of the nasty chemicals and heavily polluting mining operations that go into making electric car battery packs. The second argument revolves around the notion that because of the electrical grid's energy mix, electric vehicles are responsible for increased energy generation, often from coal and gas-fired power stations. The, the grid is so dirty itself that it's better to use gasoline instead. And the last revolves around the notion that electric vehicle batteries require replacing every few years at a cost of tens of thousands to the vehicle's owner, and that they all end up in landfill where their toxicity damages the environment. Luckily for us in the green car world, these arguments have been disproven time and time and time again. A recent study, which we are going to be covering on this channel, discusses how, actually, if you account for all of those upstream emissions associated with gasoline and diesel, electric vehicles are responsible for far fewer emissions and consume far fewer mined raw materials during their lifetime than a comparable internal combustion engine vehicle. Plenty of studies in the last decade have also shown, using reproducible scientific data, that the electrical grid just gets cleaner by the day as renewables increase in popularity and account for more of the grid power mix and are in fact more affordable to operate than using coal-fired and other fossil fuel-based power plants. And as we have seen time and time again, as well as seen anecdotal evidence that shows electric car batteries, with the exception of a small percentage of vehicles, have lifespans that well exceed the lifespan of the vehicle they were fitted in. Battery costs are coming down, and at the end of their useful life, in an electric vehicle, the overwhelming majority of electric vehicle battery packs go on and enjoy a useful and productive retirement in second life projects, be they grid-tied energy storage systems, emergency backup power solutions, or even life as a certified remanufactured battery pack for use in a different type of electric vehicle. When a lithium-ion battery pack, and of course battery packs of other cell chemistries too, are no longer useful in any application, they must be disposed of or recycled completely. And in the last decade, we've seen battery recycling programs pop up all around the world, each trying to capture as much of the raw materials from electric car battery packs as possible. And earlier this week, Volkswagen detailed its in-house battery recycling program with a rather nicely made video explaining the process from start to finish. We've discussed the benefits of battery cell recycling before, such as the obvious lack of toxic waste in landfill, recovery of raw materials that can be reused in future packs, and reduced need for mining of fresh materials. We've discussed the companies engaging in battery recycling, such as Northvolt in Europe and Redwood Recycling Company in the US, founded by former Tesla CTO J.B. Straubel, and of course, many other companies too. Volkswagen opened its pilot recycling plant in Salzgitter, Germany at the start of February, with the goal of industrialising the process of safely processing and recycling used electric car battery packs, all to recover lithium, nickel, manganese and cobalt, the important metals that go into making the cells themselves, as well as aluminium or aluminum, copper and plastics. In the long term, it hopes to recycle more than 90% of the raw materials found in every battery pack it processes, but other recycling programs around the world have even higher goals for total recovered materials. A month down the line, and Volkswagen's video means we can walk you through the process, so let's do that. Electric car battery packs store energy. And of course, before you go tearing them apart, you need to remove any of that chemical energy stored in the battery pack to ensure that when you do tear it apart, you're not going to go shorting out parts of the pack that could then release a lot of energy and go all electro-boom on you. 
And here's the thing, when you are using a lithium ion battery in an electric car, you don't actually drain it completely, nor do you charge it to 100% full. So even when your car says it's empty, it's still got anywhere between 10 and 20% of its maximum theoretical state of charge left in there. And when it says it's nearly full, it's nearer to 80 or 90% of its theoretical maximum state of charge. This is, of course, to preserve cell health and ensure that it can last a long time. But when you need to dismantle that cell, you need to truly, fully discharge it. That's where the first stage of this process comes into play. A special tool discharges the battery modules to as close to 0% state of charge as possible, ensuring there's no or minimal voltage difference between the anode and cathode of each cell. At this point, it's safe to tear the battery apart to get access to the raw materials inside. And while you might think that process would require a lot of careful manual labour, it's a little more brute force. After the battery has been fully discharged and test carried out to make sure that the individual modules inside the pack really are discharged, the external casing of the battery pack is removed, along with the power electronics inside that pack. Things like relays and safety switches. Then the individual groups of battery cells or modules are removed ahead of shredding. Yeah, I just said shredding. The fully discharged modules go into what amounts to a massive meat grinder. It's teeth grinding up the battery module, it's casing, and everything inside, including the cells, into small shredded pieces which then fall into a vat underneath. Because lithium-ion batteries contain a wet electrolyte, usually a gel-based substance, the resulting mash of battery is pretty moist. <laughs> Used and moist. I never thought I'd get to use them both in a single script, <laughs> but I did. That's, of course, no good to the metal recovery process, so those chewed up chunks of moist battery material, officially called granulate, are sent through a drying process to remove any remaining moisture. With all of that moisture removed, the dried, shredded battery material passes through a conveyor belt system in which magnets separate out ferrous and non-ferrous materials. Or rather, it separates magnetic from non-magnetic materials because, to be completely fair to my high school chemistry teacher from 1996, I seem to recall that some ferrous alloys are actually not magnetic, but I am well and truly digressing. With the magnetic and non-magnetic materials separated, there's another stage to separate the non-magnetic metals from the plastic that's still present in the battery granulate. And at that point, well, you're left with three different groups of separated materials, which will go on to be further processed and then find their way back into future battery packs. First, there are the plastic shreds we just separated out from the remaining non-ferrous metals. They can, of course, be used in future plastics, although I'm not sure if any of those plastics will make their way back into EV battery packs. But they will be recycled, and that's the important thing. Then we have the aluminium, or aluminium, and copper, the two non-ferrous metals found in most modern lithium-ion battery packs. They are pretty easy to separate from one another with the right equipment, Electrostatic separation is one such method, since aluminium and copper have different electrical conductivity. Don't worry, if you're interested in that, I'll link to a video here that you can watch demonstrating it. That final bag? Well, it contains the stuff that's magnetic. It's called black powder and contains cobalt, lithium, nickel and manganese. This is the stuff that needs the most processing in order to retrieve the original elements that went into the battery pack. And sadly, it's the part of the process that can be the most energy intensive and the most chemical dependent. I'm not going to go into the exact methods used to extract the raw materials from this black powder because there are several different ways it's done, and there are new, more environmentally friendly ways being developed on an almost daily basis. Suffice to say right now, roasting, smelting and refining are popular, where the black powder is heated up to bake apart the various chemical bonds between the metals. Then there's leaching, where acids are employed to break down the bonds between the metals. And reduction, a chemical process that involves one of the atoms gaining an electron to effectively change the chemical compounds and then make it easier to separate that raw component metal apart from the rest. If you are really into your chemistry and you'd like to see more about the process involved, I will link to a paper below that explains the current processes in more detail. 
Current lithium ion battery recycling methods result in around 60% of all raw materials being recovered. Pilot projects at both Northvolt and Redwood Recycling have managed far higher recycling rates and Volkswagen says its process, which has been operating as a pilot project since February and is now being scaled up, will recycle up to 95% of the raw materials found in lithium ion packs. As to how many batteries will actually be recycled, well, just a few years ago, the number of lithium ion batteries being torn down and recycled was pretty low. But that was because there were very few lithium-ion batteries reaching end of life, and those which were removed from cars usually were good enough for use in second life projects, rather than so terrible that they needed complete disassembly and recycling. That is, all but those that had failed due to some manufacturing defect, which was something that almost guaranteed they'd end up back at the automaker and battery manufacturer in question for detailed forensic analysis. Right now, Volkswagen says it doesn't expect more than around 3,600 battery packs a year to pass through its Salzgitter plant, which is pretty good because that's the plant's current limit. However, that is okay because Volkswagen doesn't expect high volumes of batteries to actually need recycling until the latter half of this decade, and by then, it hopes to have similar battery recycling facilities, more automated than the ones in Germany, all around the world. So there you have it. The next time someone complains about the recyclability of EV battery packs, well, you know where to send them. That's it for today. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month Patreons. That's John Lyons, Raging Fellows, Anonymous Freak, Paul Conway, Laura Sandborn, Anthony Coates, Sean Ueda, and Tesla in the Gong and our deepest eternal gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Jeffrey Songster, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, and Ian. If you'd like to join and become a Patreon supporter yourself, you can do so by following a link below. There's also links below if you want to send us a tip through Ko-fi or Bitcoin, if you'd prefer to support us in that way. There's also a link to our great Discord chat server, which is really an awesome place to go. So give that a go if you are feeling chatty. And as usual, you will find everything from hoodies to t-shirts to face masks and water bottles and even stickers at our Redbubble store. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving. Keep evolving.